What's up guys, Pop one one here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a map for Blade and Sorcery. So let's get started. First off, this is assuming that you've already downloaded the map model that you want to use and you already have basic knowledge of Unity. If you don't, I recommend checking out the video in the top right corner. First off, let's drag in our model and this is what it looks like. So to start, we're going to want a base. So where the players are all going to be walking. So what we're going to want to do is I just made this a cube so it's a nice flat one. Um, you can scale it obviously and I just set the material to dirt so it's the normal dirt sound when you walk on it. Once we have our map model in Unity what we need to do is save this as a separate scene in order to make it a map. So what we need to do is simply click these three dots, save scene as and save it wherever you like. In my case it's the Tsukuyomi so I'll name it. We'll see that our scene is saved right here and you'll know that it changed if this is named whatever you just typed it in. Once we have our new scene save, what we can do is actually add the components to make the map. So if we go to assets, SDK, scenes, proto level, drag it in. Now what we're going to want to do is click on the level definition, click on this triangle and spawn location. So you can drag those both in under the Tsukuyomi or whatever your map name is scene. Click these three dots and remove the proto level scene. Don't save it. I'd also highly recommend scaling your map along with the proto level. Once we have those components in, they look like this. So let's just drag them down to the bottom and we can go to assets, examples, blade and sorcery assets and drag in the sand book for the waves, the item selector for the items and our weapon rack. Click on all of them, right click and unpack them completely. Now, if we go into our level definition, just make sure to drag in the altar sandbook, item selector, and our weapon rack so that the game will actually use them. If we click on our sandbook, we can start off by setting the waves. So if we look at this, you'll notice it's not actually on the ground, so let's just drag it down a little bit. That looks good to me, so what we're going to do is click on our UI wave spawner, click on ID, and name it exactly Arena. Now this will let you use all of the default blade and sorcery waves in this book. After you've typed that in, we're going to want to drag in our spawn location under the wave spawner. And what we can do is click on this and click this three times because we're adding in all four of these spawn points. So these spawn points are where the enemies spawn at random. You can hit the plus and add different and more spawns, but in this case, I'm only going to be doing four by default. So if we click on that one, we'll notice where it is by default, and that's a little bit far. So just for this example, I'm going to be dragging them all very, very close. So then you'll be able to see when I test this for you. And those are where the enemies are going to spawn. It is actually at a pretty good place. Just make sure that it's not through the ground, uh, or else enemies will spawn in the ground. So we don't want that, so let's just drag it up just a little bit and save it. Side note, if you want to change the audio for waves, what you can do is scroll down in the spawn location and you'll need to create an addressable and set this music wave address to that different addressable. I'm not going to be showing you how to do it in this tutorial because it's not really that important, but if anybody else has questions about it, you can always ask in the Blade of Sorcery Discord. So after doing that, what we can do is now go to our item selector. And if we go to our item selector, you'll notice there is no altar to go along with it. So what we can do is go back to our sandbook altar with the waves. If we do control D, we can copy and paste it. And what we can do is actually name this item selector. The name doesn't necessarily matter, but this will make things a little bit easier. So all you need to do, let's just open this up. And what we can do is, is take the UI item spawner drag it underneath as a child of the new item selector altar, this parent that you just made. And what we're going to do is click on the wave spawner. So this wave UI, right click, copy component, go to the new item spawner UI, right click, paste component. Now we'll have the item spawner and the wave spawner right here. So we just delete the wave spawner UI. And now we only spawn weapons through here. So let's just drag this item selector to the side. And here you go. One book that spawns waves, one that spawns items. Now note, now that we changed the parent, 
I don't know if changing that will not allow it to work, so what I'm just going to do in this is drag in our new item selector, and it should work fine anyways. I don't think it'll be a problem regardless, but just for this video, I'm going to show you that. And finally, we can delete the old item selector, now that we have these two different authors right here. And last but not least, we have our amazing weapon rack. So what we can do is simply grab our weapon rack, wherever it may be, and drag it down, and pull it over. And let's just put it right next to these books. Because it's already set up, so you don't need to do anything special to it. And there we are. What we need to do is actually add colliders to it. So that when you hit stuff, it will actually collide with it. So if we click on our ground right here, you'll notice, let's say that there was no collider here already. What you can do for any of these is you go to add component, type in mesh, mesh collider. And if you just change this to whatever you want, like dirt, turn off the mesh filter, you'll notice that it is automatically making colliders for it. Turn the mesh renderer back on. But just like that, what we're going to do is select everything under here. So shift click everything, go to add component, mesh collider. And I believe these are all wood. So let's click on this, type in wood. And all you need to do is add that in, click on mesh render, and you'll notice that all the colliders are made. So let's do control Z, turn back on the mesh renderer so that we can see it. And every single thing in this map that does not move, we want to click the check static box. This will help improve game performance immensely. So I'd highly recommend clicking check static for every part of the map that does not move. Now, if you notice by default, the books are selected static as well. Now, in order to actually get enemies to run around in the map, what you need to do is make some navigation. So, while this is checked off as static, at least just make sure the navigation static is checked on. What we do is we go to Windows, AI, Navigation. And we want to bake it on. Now, if there's steps or something, I'd recommend increasing the max slope as high as you can because that just means that enemies can walk up the slope of the stairs. So if we bake it now, you'll know you did it properly if it's all blue. And these little boxes around these items mean that enemies will pathfind and not walk directly into all of these crosses. They'll walk only on the blue. And if you want to change this, what you can do is simply do something like click on the agent radius and just shrink it, bake it again, and there you go. Now enemies will walk even closer. Now just with all these components, if you built it and tried to put it in game with the Jasons, it would work as a map. But now what we can do is add a couple things to it to make it a better map. So first off, we have our map. It looks pretty good so far. After we've done this, what we can do is right click, go to create empty and name it occlusion area. Now this will help with performance. So if we go to occlusion area, and what we're gonna do is simply just zoom out, whatever you like, make sure it's a top down view. And we can just make this as large as we want. So if we do this, I'd recommend covering the entire space of your map. You can also grab these and drag it. Again, this will immensely help with performance. So what this does is if in game we're looking right in front of this, since this is the only thing we see, the game will turn off everything else except for exactly what you're looking at, which will save performance. Once we've done that, we go to Window, Rendering, Occlusion Color, and we need to simply click on Bake, and I recommend just baking it as is. Now, when in game, the occlusion will actually work. Just as a little example, if you right click and you create a camera, of course, when using a map, you only want a light in the map. You don't want a camera, but just for an example to show you guys, is while the occlusion is on, if this is our camera right in here, if we turn it 
and let's say we fly up to the top of the map, notice this part of the map is no longer there. So as long as we're not looking at it, it will not render, which saves a lot of performance. After we set up the occlusion, the other thing to bake in order to save performance is our lighting. One other good thing for lighting is setting your mode to something like baked or mixed and keeping your shadows at soft. So if we close out of this tab, we go to window, rendering and lighting this time. Let's just drag it in. Let's create new lighting settings. There we go, and I'll just name it Sukuyami. Once this is set up, change this to baked and direct, leave it as progressive CPU, change this to 30, change this to 512, turn on ambient occlusion, and you want to hit generate lighting. Now everybody has their own way of setting up lighting. This is the way that I was recommended to do it, so I'm going to do it like that in this video. One cool thing is if you want to change the actual background of the maps, if we go to environment, you can add in a new skybox. Now there's a couple things you can download, but in my case, since this is a Sukuyomi, I of course need it to be nice and red. So I'm going to be using this skybox, and then now that I added one in, I need to generate the lighting again, because it actually bakes light into all of the meshes. All right, now that we have our beautiful finished map, what we need to do is go to Window, Asset Management, Addressables, and Groups. We need to create a new group. So if we click on this, rename it whatever you want. In my case, Tsukuyomi. Set it to default. Drag in your scene and name it to whatever you like. So in my case, PyPop101's.Sukuyomi. Go to Thunder Road SDK, Mod Builder. Make sure to only have the map that you just did selected. Name the folder. Just make sure that this is set to default and everything is set up properly. And build and export. Now that it's finished building, don't worry about this error if we go into our mods folder and we pull out our JSONs. In my case, it's under this. So if we go to levels, take the arena JSON, if we go to the folder that we just made, it's the suit of Yomi, paste it in, and we're just going to rename everything. So, suit of Yomi, open it up. This doesn't matter, this doesn't really matter, and th what does matter is our scene address. So if you notice, we named it pop pop 101 Sukuyomi. So, Sukuyomi, and don't worry about these icons. I'm not entirely sure how to set those up properly just yet, and don't worry about the rest. Close it, and we need to add a manifest JSON. So if we take something like from the Kamui spell, and just paste it in, open it up. Make sure that this is the exact same name as your mod folder. Just make sure your game version is also 10.0 as well. All right, now that it's done, we can open up Steam and test this map out. And just to show you guys that the map works, Let's go to it right now. As you can tell, we have a very amazing map. Look at this. Notice that the lighting was baked on. It's nice and red. Looks cool. And if we click on exotics, try to spawn something. Oh, those spawn perfectly. And let's spawn a couple enemies just for fun. So let's see if those work. And what do you know? An enemy spawns. So guys, that's it. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. Thanks for watching.